Welcome to Three Count Commentaries. Unfortunately, I'm back with yet another video. This time, we're going to talk about the Pierce Morgan argument that took place as Pierce invited Maven, Vince Russo, Charlie Caruso, uh, and Phil Mushnick to talk about Vince McMahon. Now, we're going to, go, going to go through this entire thing. The whole thing is 40 minutes. It's entirely too long. No, there's nothing really groundbreaking that incur that occurs until Phil Mushnick comes in and him and Vince Russo, him and Jonathan Coachman, they all start to argue. And that's really the the point here is let's just go through some of this. Now this thing went on for I don't know what it seems it looks like about 10 minutes. And we're not going to go through this. We're just going to go through uh Mushnick coming on to the scene and causing drama. Now, I don't like how this was done. Morgan, you know, he was being funny in the way of doing this, basically as a run-in, you know, kind of like pro wrestling. But it was set up with him allowing pretty much the the panel as it existed to talk shit about Phil Mushnick before Phil Mushnick shows up. And it's a completely different conversation that you can have with people when you know that you're going to be on with them but they don't know when you that you're going to be there so it's a completely different uh dynamic and everybody's not on equal footing um it's easier to have a conversation when both parties are gonna know they're gonna be on the show than you don't know that this guy's gonna be on the show so in any event let's get into uh phil mushnick making an appearance on Pierce Morgan and causing a ruckus. Okay, well, look, in classic WWE fashion, it's time to introduce to the uncensored ring a surprise guest because flying Ooh. in off the top rope, Let's hopefully not with a steel chair, is the New York Post legendary <laughs> columnist and Vince McMahon nemesis, Phil Mushnick, who's been listening to all of that. Phil, welcome. Wow. Thank you. Yeah, you've I been called a few things. Called a few uh, things there by the by your fellow panelists. Phil, do you want to respond? Well, uh, the first thing I'd ask, the first thing I'd ask Piers is, can any of your panelists name one thing, one thing I wrote about McMahon, the WWF exposing a pedophile ring on McMahon's watch? Somebody who was a Dizzard Russo. I got two kids. How about the kids they who were sexually abused who didn't have parents? Okay. This is, again, Phil Mushnick was instrumental in exposing the Ring Boy scandal. However, Vince McMahon was not involved in the Ring Boy scandal. It was actually some, you know, lower level guys who really didn't have too much control over the talent. They had control over the Ring Boys who just set up the ring and did eye jobs around it. But outside of Pat Patterson, none of these guys really had any control over, like, the boys. So, um, and Vince is not involved in everything. If there's some kind of crime that happens at General Motors, do you think that the CEO of General Motors knows about it? Likely no. But it's all about the response. And some people have questioned the response, which is fair. You know, you can always question these responses. But I think Mushnick, you know, talking about, you know, he, he wrote this thing about the pedophile ring and it ended up being true. Um, but nobody went to prison over this. And... Maybe they should have. I, I certainly think that the guys who were molesting boys at the WWF should definitely have been arrested and sent to prison. But then nobody went to prison for this. Who were sexually abused, who didn't have parents. And they were all in McMahon's purview. They were Phil, all Phil, we just did a lot of what you did. I'm going to stop you right there. I'm going to stop you right there. So that's Coach, by the way. A lot of what you no, said no, don't is true. Stop nobody, no, nobody's saying I, that. Can I stop no, Phil, you? Surprise, you, you surprise. You brought up my kids. You're no, a sellout. No, no, You're a Phil, sellout. You, what we you said have no moral side. See, we went into this thing. They were having a somewhat decent conversation. You know, it was about 50. It was about 75, 25 anti-vents in the conversation, which, you know, is to be expected. But... Now, Phil Mushnick is acting like these guys are like Vince defenders or whatever. Coach was one of the guys who was actually burying Vince. And now he's calling them a sellout. Like, huh? A sellout. See, and, and Pierce, this is what I'm talking you about. Had, I've, never, I've never met this man. 
I've never met Ross, this man, and he said I have no moral fiber. He doesn't coach, know he me. Wanted, coach, he stuff. wanted proof. Coach, he wanted proof. I just I said yes. the proof. How come? I called you out. I called there you out go. 30 years Coachman. ago when you made it up. You, you made never stuff spoke. up, Bill, 30 you years ago, keep bro. Keep shouting because you're a fraud. We're going to sit there and say you're we have a guy. Because maybe you're senile, bro. Well, no, maybe we talked a lot. Maybe you we talked a lot. The oh, my God. So what Vince Russo was talking about, because I forgot that it was not really addressed in this part. Um Russo was talking about the steroid trial. Um, and when asked about Phil Mushnick, Vince Russo told the story that WWF had a symposium on steroids in the WWF. And he invited various media to shut come up and Phil Mushnick never showed. But Phil Mushnick then wrote an article about it in which Vince Russo says there were a lot of things in there that were incorrect and that Phil Mushnick himself never went. So he doesn't know what was said. Um, and I guess at the time Vince Russo was running a newsletter, a uh, competing newsletter to like the wrestling observer or whatever. And you know, for a while he was on the radio and had worked with like John Arezzi. So he was kind of a dirt sheet guy himself, Vince Russo. That's kind of his background before he really got into wrestling. Um, so this is why these two are arguing at each other. And, um, I'm not really a big fan of arguments, but let's go. A lot. Oh, baby, you we just talked got out a lot. of the chair, bro. You reported on stuff that was Don't never said. Don't call me said, bro, bro, bro. I'll call you whatever. I'll call you a liar then. How about You're... that, bro? I'll call you a liar. You reported on Knock stuff that was out. never said. I recorded you have the no credibility. You went in you the New York You used to be again. You was never said. Yeah, what? What, bro? I was what? I used again. to be what? I used to be, bro. Are you going to let me speak? Oh, go ahead. Tell me speak? what I used to be. Are you going to let me speak? Go ahead. Sure, what so, I used to ahead. be, Did you once... I was, did you once feels, write a newsletter speak. about speak. pro wrestling? Did you yes. run once... And weren't you very, very anti-McMahon, right? I no, got the I was copies of all lie. Yes, yeah, show, show, show us the copies right now, Phil. Show us the copies right now. Anti-McMahon, my what butt, bro. I was moron. fair. I was a fair. That's why I went to the symposium to hear his side of the story because guys like you were burying him. So I, I was, there's got to be because. another side to the story. That's why I went and you didn't go because. Oh, my word. Uh, I will say this. Um, in terms of reporting on events that you did not see yourself, that, I mean, that's just kind of how journalists are. That doesn't mean that Phil Mushy didn't talk to somebody who went to the event. And maybe the person who was his, um, I guess you could say informant, is the one who gave him the information. And you don't necessarily have to go. You're basically trusting your source to provide you with good information. Now, if Vince Russo was attacking Phil Mushnick's source, then... It is what it is, but ultimately it ain't a necessity that you go. But at the same time, I actually agree with Vince Russo that if you really cared about the issue and you called yourself a journalist, why wouldn't you attend? You know, even if it was bullshit, which, you know, a lot of people assume that it was, especially considering guys were still taking steroids after the steroid trial and after this symposium. And, and also just kind of a little aside. You're not supposed to really be able to drug test independent contractors. Like you can't drug test your painter. Like you can't drug test like the roofers. You know, like it doesn't work that way. That's too much control over their uh, over their labor. They can do whatever they want on their free time, which is what essentially what wrestlers were doing. Um, and a lot of the the drug addiction and all that kind of stuff that was happening with the wrestlers was them on their free time. It wasn't really them on WWF's time. And that's really what Vince was going to trial for is. What was he sanctioning the use of their steroids? And they couldn't prove that he was. And he certainly couldn't prove that they were he was selling it to them or allowing it to be sold to them, which is why he beat the case. But ultimately, there were people taking steroids in the WWF, you know, but a lot of those guys were taking steroids long before they got there. And then people who are taking steroids before they got there were continuing to take steroids because Vince has always been sort of selective about who he tests and when. And, you know, that kind of thing. 
So it was bullshit. So Mushnick was right on that. It was bullshit. But why didn't he go? I think it was in New York or New Jersey, which is in Phil Mushnick's general area. So, I mean, interesting enough, let's get back into the argument. You didn't want to hear the other side of the story because you had to sell newspapers, bro. You're the fraud. And, I mean, and you I, embarrass I can't, me I can't have, I can't have myself a, a journalist. Okay, let me jump. Okay. Russo called him a fraud. He called Russo a fraud. My God. <laughs> My God. This is, this is amazing. Poor Charlie. She's just sitting there like, what is going on? And Maven is smirking. I mean, flummoxed, I think is the right word about what's going on here. But what I love about this thing, even though I really don't care about the argument and them yelling at each other, is that Russo actually teased this for two days. Like, I don't know when this, this was obviously filmed earlier in the week of October, 2024. It was released on October the 18th. So it he was, he was talking about this at least two or three days before the, um, about how he got into it with Phil Mushnick. But, and <laughs> it was pretty funny. So everybody was kind of expecting it, but what a menagerie of people that they decided to bring together here. Um, so let's continue. I, I'll try to find a healthy cutoff point, but right now it seems like they're still, they still got stuff to get off their chest. And uh, as a good I referee, can't... Good referee would. I just woke was Piers, Piers. Phil. I woke up one morning, and I, I was covering mainstream sports, and I decided to fabricate all these fantasies about the WWF. I didn't even watch it. I thought I knew I could see where it was going. The steroids and the mm -hmm. and the uh, prurient uh, content. I could see it was getting really ugly and 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 really vicious and 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 just sexually sexually inappropriate for anybody and i just decided i'll make some stuff up or did i get called from ring boys what well, you peers can you give me a second i'll tell you how my okay before we before we really get into it <clears throat> understand that a lot of this stuff that was going on when he's talking about he's looking at um he's getting calls from ring boys all right, again, that's a legitimate story that is worth discussing. But he said he didn't watch the product. And then he started saying that he saw that it was sexually you know, inappropriate and all this sort of stuff. What was he watching? Because WWF didn't get sexually inappropriate until like 1997. This is way, this is years after the Ring Boy scandal. And it was <laughs> years after Mushnick's initial run in with Vince. You know, so he, he's mixing his years up here. In the early 90s, there was a lot of steroids and, you know, um, the Ring Boy scandal happened and Vince was accused of rape. In the late 90s, the content on the show became somewhat objectionable um, with a lot of the sexual stuff from like DX and Sable and all that stuff, right? Gold dust and everything. But those two things were not really overlapping. The late 80s early 90s WWF when Vince was undergoing like the steroid trial there was nothing that was sexually inappropriate about that product I think the, the closest you could probably get is Rick Rude swiveling his hips you know and maybe okay maybe you could say what about the snake bite segment all right maybe that but that's violence that's not sexual being sexually inappropriate um, there really aren't that many women at all in WWF at the time. So where is the sexual impropriety in the early nineties, WWF? It didn't really get that way until 97. So I don't know, but he's going to, I guess, lay out, uh, how he ended up getting involved in this. And, uh, I guess I'm willing to give him the listen. Inclusion began. I read in the New York times, two paragraphs. Hulk Hogan was going to be uh, dismissed from the, the Dr. Zahorian drug trial, Vince's uh, the wrestling doctor, because it might be injurious to his public image and career. Mm. And I'm saying, well, what kind of... But his career is built, built on take your vitamins, say your prayers, and suddenly he's exploding on, on, on drugs. He, you can see it. It was obvious, except maybe to... 
to to Russo that that he was on he was on steroids. Let me ask you, Phil. And he was let me <laughs> okay. So <clears throat> so he's basically saying he got, but he was. I think he was already involved in this, if I remember correctly. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't. I don't remember his articles that well, and I didn't like give a thorough read to Phil Mushnick's articles to have it in an appropriate timeline in my head. So he saw that Hulk Hogan was being released from the lawsuit or the the legal case because it might be injurious to his career, and he thought that that was um, bullshit because Hogan's whole thing is say your prior, say your vitamins, take your. <laughs> say your vitamins, say your prayers, take your vitamins, etc., which is obviously a, uh, something that is geared towards children while Hogan himself bulged from drug abuse. Um, okay. Um, the problem with this is that steroids was made illegal years after Hogan had started doing it. Like again, steroids, the, the, part of the reason the whole conversation is even happening about steroids is that Steroids became a controlled substance that you cannot use in the early 90s. So throughout the entirety of Hulk Hogan's run from 1984 to like 1990, the usage of steroids was completely legal. And then it became out of nowhere a, a controlled substance that you can't, you know, be in possession of it or sell it. So, you know, um... It's okay to say, you know, these guys would have just admitted that they did use steroids while it was legal because so what, <laughs> you know, it was legal at the time, but it was a big deal in high school and college sports that a bunch of guys were getting busted with steroids. It's still a big issue. It became a big issue in baseball uh, later on. I'm pretty sure it's still a big issue in football, even though I don't think they, they, um, uh, they publicize these steroids testing anymore or anything like that. And I don't think the NBA actually tests for steroids at all. Um, I've never heard of an NBA player being on steroids though. In any event. So this is how much Nick gets involved with it. Is he takes an interest once the government decides that they're not going to, um, after this, election. go after Hulk Hogan for steroid use. Bill. Uh, and, well, and then, and then the, and then the letters came. They had never read anything like that in the mainstream media, and they all read, you don't know the half of it. So I didn't, I didn't, I didn't decide to like throw away my, my, uh, no, 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 Phil, if you want my, Phil, if you want me, if you want my opinion, I think you're an excellent reporter who's been doing excellent reporting. I, I guess the question is, uh, as, as the panelists said before they knew you were coming on, whether you had a vendetta against Vince McMahon, he called you once on Monday Night Raw a self-righteous, egotistical, miserable son of a bitch. So there clearly was no love lost on his part either. <laughs> but what is your genuine you view? I think I don't know that's a work. Of course, well, my, my question was... But that's a work. Of course. He thinks that Vince calling him names on television is a work. Okay. Entirely possible. You never know with Vince. My, my question for you is... This is what he does. No, of course, of course. It's, it's a kind of Trump-style trash talk. But in terms of your perception of Vince McMahon, it's quite hard to work out from the documentary and from everything I've read and gleaned where the villain begins and ends and where the showman uh, uh, who sort of you know, blurs alignment between fact and fiction begins and ends. How bad a person, in your opinion, is Vince McMahon? My empirical knowledge, my knowledge based on research, based on interviews, and interviews with really good people. I've met some wonderful people. Bruno Sammartino was one of the most noble people I've met because he told the truth. Mm. But based on what I know of Vince McMahon, he's the closest thing to the fictional character uh, Hannibal Lecter I've ever met. Wow. A serial killer. He's that sick. Really? That... Now that's personal dislike. <laughs> he's, he's the closest thing to Hannibal Lecter. Jeez Louise. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, that's amazing. He said through uh, interviews, etc. Look, we get it. Um, Bruno San Martino is a good person to use as a source because I don't think anybody's ever called Bruno a liar. That being said, Bruno was miffed at Vince for a while there. 
you know, um, because he ended up firing his son and he pretty much changed the entire business, you know, at one point. Um, and Bruno wasn't a big fan of the changes in the business. Really? I think he, I, I think he, I think he's a sociopath. Yes, absolutely. Uh, who, what do you, what do you do when you make jokes on the air as the future governor of Minnesota did, Jesse Ventura, about all the pedophiles that were being in, indulged, transported, and, uh, and all the kids that would show up from city to city. They had no parental restraints. They were coming from foster homes. They were e uh, Again, I don't understand what guys like Jesse Ventura, and yes, Jesse Ventura made jokes on the air alluding to it. I think Gorilla Monsoon did as well. But I don't think Vince did. Um, at least I don't remember him doing that. Maybe he did. I don't know. But I, I don't. I'm not sure. You know uh, where this information is coming from. But I don't know. Maybe his memory is better than mine. Easy pickings. They were easy prey, and it happened on McMahon's watch, and it happened on everyone's watch. And you, Vince Russo, who used to kiss his, who used to be at that. Uh, McMahon. Yeah. Then you started show kissing me, his ass because he got me. paid, oh, Bill, Bill, and you're like everybody else. Uh oh, hey, they're starting back up again. He said that you, you used to be anti McMahon, and then you started kissing his ass because you got paid. I, I mean, that's a good reason to change your opinion. <laughs> you get a job. That's a good reason to change your opinion. Like uh, Dave Chappelle said, he did commercials for both Coke and Pepsi. You know, so. I mean, <laughs> whichever one pays me most recently is the one that tastes better. I'm and not going to sit there and lie without me no. talking over you. You're Who's a liar. Dr. Moro I, was never, I was never Who? pro McMahon before, ever. I've reported the truth and the facts. You did not go to the steroid symposium because did you, you had the character. They didn't want to hear his side of it. Did you go, Phil? Did you ever? You were no, you're not letting did you go. What? You had a lunch date, bro? Here, Why I'll didn't you go, Phil? Who, who's Dr. Maro Di Pasquale? Who's Dr. Maro Di Pasquale? That was the person he had present at, at, the, at the steroid symposium. Yeah, go right. ahead, Phil. And what was his what was his specialty? What was his specialty? Con, Big shot. I guess he was. I guess he was a his, con man, Phil. I, I guess he was. I guess he was. I guess he was an actor. He, he his was an actor. Phil. He was. He was from Canada. His specialty yeah. was how to yeah. teach athletes to beat steroid right. tests. So then that why was didn't you go to, why, did, why, yeah. didn't, why yeah. didn't you go to why didn't you go to the symposium and say that? To go why didn't you go to the symposium and I say was that? Way ahead of you. Okay, let me bring yeah. Okay. So <laughs> he says, I was way ahead of you. Basically he saw that it was horse shit and he decided not to go. Okay. That that mean that makes sense, I guess. So, for people who don't know who this guy is, Mario D. Pasquale, Pasquale was a bodybuilder and a doctor who uh, worked for Vince because he worked for the WWF and the World Bodybuilding Federation that, during that short amount of time that that thing existed. Um, so, this guy does work for Vince and did work for Vince. So, there was a reason to doubt the seriousness of Mauro Di Pasquale's um, bona fides as a specialist on steroids. Now, whether he was teaching guys how to beat steroids, I, I don't know. But this is what uh, Mushnick is claiming. So, Why well, ahead of you? Okay, let me bring yeah, in... Okay, okay. Hang, on, hang on, please. Hang on. Let uh, me bring in Maven. He wants to say something, I think. Uh, that's a, that was a good run in, Piers. And in fact, I did know Mr. Mushnick was going to be on here. The only question I would have for him, and I'm not going to impugn you know, his life work. The only question I would have for him is, have you ever met Vince? Have you ever sat down with him? Have you ever traveled with we've him spoken, on the road? We've spoken I'll on the never, phone. I'll we've, never say... We've, I'll never say everything Vince has done has landed, and I'll never say he didn't have bad ideas. He certainly did, and some of the things he did was, you know, was just just plain out evil. But to say he's sadistic, I mean, I, why I've was heard, any of it though? Why I've was heard, I mean, it's it's weird that you could not have killed anybody, 
and are an accused rapist without actually having been proven to be a rapist. And you can be compared to like a serial killer, even a fictional one. Like it's, it's, it's a weird, uh, comparison to make. And it's, it seems very extreme, you know, like there's some really extremely dangerous people on planet earth. I don't think Vince McMahon is one of them. Even if you don't like him, even if you don't like his ideas, even if you don't like some of the things that he hired people to do to compare him to Hannibal Lecter is kind of, it's, it's kind of crazy. You know, it's, it's showing that you, <clears throat> you, 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 you just don't like him personally. I think you need to put things in context and that seems like something that's taken completely out of context, but okay, let's, let's see. Um, at least he didn't say Hitler evil but to say he's sadistic i mean I, why I was heard, any of it though I, why was I've any heard, of I've it seen, plain out i've evil? heard not why was it plain if he was plain out evil on occasion how could how, how why are you telling me that oh i got him all wrong because, well because here's what i do Bill, know Bill, every, every, everything he's talking about maven and, and i'll jump in real quick every, everything you're talking about phil happened before four of us were there and 30 years ago and that what we're trying to give an equal, and we're admitting all of us are admitting that everything he did was not was not good. But you haven't brought up one thing that happened fellow, after 1999. After 1999. Well, well, okay, here's an interesting point. I wasn't covering. I, let me ask you, Phil. Wait. Much it continued to write stories about the WWF after 1999. He was about to lie, but I think that um, most of the stuff that he he brought up. Look, it, it's you can bring up things that happened a long time ago, but when it comes to at least the Ring Boy scandal, Vince was not directly involved in that. And that is sort of the, the claim to fame for Phil Mushnick, because Vince wasn't directly involved with that. And he was found innocent and not guilty of the steroid stuff. So it's like this whole thing seems like it was personal between the two of them. And it could be. You know, Mushnick says that he talked to Vince on the phone. I don't know what kind of discussions they may have had, but, you know, um, at least it's interesting to know that they did have conversations. And, you know, um, Vince apparently talks to like Meltzer and Mushnick and these guys, you know, when they're writing stories about him. But apparently that kind of stopped over time, um, which sounds like something that, you know, obviously, if you're not going to be able to talk sense into some of these people, you just got to give up. But whatever. Uh, let me ask you, Phil. Go, Phil, well, Phil, you, you were one of the first. Coachman? Well, are Phil, you the let me just coachman jump in a moment, Phil. NY? Phil was one of the first journalists to expose the widespread use of steroids in WWE. Right. Uh, Vince yeah. McMahon was acquitted in 1994 and the for distributing steroids and one of conspiracy to distribute steroids. Uh, he addressed Phil Mushnick directly afterwards. We've got that clip. I was constantly amazed at the utter lack of ethics of some of the good guys involved in my case, all of whom had demonstrable ties to Mr. Phil Mushnick. I watched the good guys lie to the media, lie to the judge, lie to the jury. I watched the good guys get caught because they tried to pressure my alleged co-conspirator into changing his prior sworn testimony. I watched as the good guys were forced to admit that they had destroyed evidence. And I saw the ultimate impact of the truth when the jury acquitted me and the World Wrestling Federation without us even having to put on a defense or call even one witness. Oh my goodness. That's prime smug Vince right there, boy. He, he is smug as fuck. And Musnick is grinning and shaking his head like this is unreal. Um, look, I don't know what the... Look, I didn't follow the steroid trial. This is not one of those, you know, Bix and Span-like channels where I'm going to go do a deep dive and pull up all the newspaper articles and all the transcripts from the steroid trial. They may do that kind of stuff. I'm just going to say the, the result was what it was for a reason and we could we could say that oh it was the wild samoans intimidating the jury or whatever the hell but ultimately he beat the case 
And it was for a reason, you know. And if he didn't put on a defense, as he claimed, then it means the state's case was extremely weak, which is consistent across the board. Everybody pretty much talks about how weak the case was. But um, let's see what Mushnick has to say about the defense clip. And then I guess we'll wrap things up after that. Witness. Uh, Phil, was I mean, there was obviously no doubt that a lot of them were on steroids, right? So were you surprised when McMahon was acquitted? Why do you think that happened? And do you give yes, him any but, credit for what I, he did really, afterwards in cleaning I, it up? I firmly... Piers, I believe that he was, he was uh, prosecuted in the wrong jurisdiction. Had he been prosecuted in Stamford, Connecticut, where all the drugs from Dr. Zahorian were delivered... To McMahon, who admitted to using uh, steroids, but he said he did them legally. Now, if he did them legally, go down to the corner pharmacist and get your steroids. Don't get them from a guy who's doing four years in prison, in a federal prison. That's exactly what I did. I... So he... so wait a second. Now, hold on. For starters, Zahorian was in Pennsylvania. He was a doctor in Pennsylvania who was, you know, and again, if he was taking them legally, then he was getting them legally from a doctor in Pennsylvania and was ta and transporting them to Connecticut for his personal use, which is what this is, you know, I guess you could say his defense was, you know. Um, so what is Mushnick talking about? Him saying that he should have been prosecuted in Connecticut. OK, maybe he should have been prosecuted in Connecticut. But you still would have had to prove that he was trying to distribute steroids. Now, Maven's about to chime in because he used steroids. But we're not going to go through this entire video. We're just going to say this whole thing is very, very personal. And the light, as Pierce Morgan says, it's the life's work of Phil Mushnick. And I, I think he did a good job. I'm not, I'm going to say Phil Mushnick, despite the fact that I find him somewhat objectionable. He did a good job exposing the Ring Boy scandal. He did a good job following the steroid trial. As journalists tend to do, some of them have good information. They come to wrong conclusions. You know, Mushnick considers Vince guilty, even though he beat the case, because in his mind, he was guilty before the trial even happened. He says, oh, the, the guys were on steroids. It's like, yes, they were on steroids. Many of them admitted that they were on steroids. But again, steroids have been legal for most of their adult lives. So, so what? They were on steroids. And many of those guys were doing steroids before they even came to the WWF. You know, like if you look at the physique of like Rick Rude when he was in uh, world class, you know, you you tell me he not he wasn't on steroids then? Did you see, um, uh, Kerry Von Erich, the Texas Tornado? Did you see his physique when he was in when he was in Texas? You tell me tell me he wasn't on steroids. Do you think that the Ultimate Warrior who wrestled as the Dingo Warrior, you know, in Texas and in Memphis and other places wasn't on steroids? You think Lex Luger wasn't on steroids? You think some of the guys in WCW weren't on steroids? They may not have gotten busted. But you think those guys weren't on steroids too? Superstar Billy Graham had to admit, of course, years after this, that he used to take steroids all the time. He took steroids as a bodybuilder. Most of these guys, a lot of them anyway, were bodybuilders. Of course they took steroids. The, the question was, did Vince McMahon force them to take steroids? And considering so many of them were taking steroids before they got there, the answer to that question is no. Did Vince sell them or distribute steroids to them? You can ask the question about that, and that might be a little bit fuzzier, but ultimately they could not convince the jury that he had. And it wouldn't matter if it was in Pennsylvania, Connecticut, or New York. If you can't prove that he was using, I mean, I'm not sorry, not using, but distributing steroids, he beats the case. It's not a question of whether these guys were on steroids. It's where they, where they were getting their steroids from. And a lot of them were getting them from doctors like Dr. Zahorian or personal doctors. Just like there was another steroid uh, issue in the WWF shortly after I think Eddie Guerrero passed away. And this one got uh, Edge caught up and Rey Mysterio. And, uh, and I think Mr. Kennedy got caught up in that. They were taking HGH. And um, 
because you know it helps with it's human growth hormone. It was helping with uh, healing of injuries and stuff like this. So they didn't really get in a lot of trouble, but most of them got busted, you know, using steroids. If guys are doing this stuff on their own, that's that. That doesn't mean that Vince is guilty of distributing steroids. No, no different than when these guys were doing painkillers or or cocaine. Vince wasn't giving it to them. You know, he was saying. I mean, you could say that he was rewarding guys for doing steroids, which I think is pretty obvious, you know, um, but at the same time, that's not distribution. And that is not, you know, him forcing guys to take steroids. It's just not. All right. We had fun here, I guess, but this thing has, has been gone on long enough. Let me know what you think. And I'll talk to you guys later. Yeah.